Welcome to Hidden History Stories from the Secret City. I'm Ray Smith, and my co-host Keith McDaniel has a head cold today, so he's uh, he's not going to join join us today. But I'm uh, he will record. I'll record this, and he'll put it up for us later today. But uh, I've got a really good friend with me today as my guest, Ram Upaluri. And uh, I'm not going to tell you a lot about his background because he's going to do that. He's going to share a story with us about growing up in Oak Ridge in a very unique situation if you stop and think about his parents. And he will tell you all about that. And then we'll go into other conversations. We'll talk about the Oak Ridge International Friendship Bell, how that came to be. And then we'll uh, venture off into the Sister City program how that came to be and where it is today. And then we may even talk, uh, Rom, if you want to, we may even talk what we uh, see as the future for Oak Ridge and how all of this blends together for this, what some are calling a nuclear renaissance as far as nuclear energy goes. And, and Oak Ridge is right smack dab in the middle of that. So start by telling us how you came to be in Oak Ridge. Well, hi, Ray. It's so nice to see you. And yes, I do think of our relationship as a great friendship, and I'm really honored by it. And I miss Keith McDaniel here, and I hope he's feeling better. You know, that would have been so fun to be joined by him. And I know both of you knew my parents, um, especially my mom, because my dad passed away in 1995. It's hard to imagine, but more about 30 years ago. But my mom persisted and was a real active, you know, fixture here in Oak Ridge. Um, and she unfortunately passed away last year. That's what brought me back to Oak Ridge. I had a career in Washington, D.C., but I came back in 22 uh, to take care of my mom. And um, after she passed away, I just decided to stay. So here I am, you know, leaning back in to what I think you have observed is something really exciting happening here there there does seem to be something exciting happening I, I agree it's a good time to be in oak ridge the the uh i mean you see homes being built apartments being built and when they build them they've already rented them before they get them completed so yeah. people are coming into oak ridge we're running what about thirty four thousand people now yeah. and uh, there's all <laughs> kinds of activity happening they just announced uh uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday morning, Steve Jones announced at the ETEC meeting that the Triso X uh, company out in the Horizon Center is going to be breaking ground within the next uh, two weeks. So you and of course, Cairo's power is already there. And and we'll talk about other things, but just to con confirm what you say, we're we're in an exciting time in Oak Ridge now. Yeah. Yeah, and let's and, go back. Yeah, and and reflect on, uh, and of course, you talk about your parents. I, I didn't know your dad, but Shigeko, your mom, was a just a special person with me. And I, I have to tell this story just to kind of put it into perspective. All of this uh, uh, sister city issues and and the things that came about, she was very much in the center of that. And when they would bring the Japanese children here, she would always ask me to meet her at the Oak Ridge International Friendship Bell. And she would tell me that she wanted me to tell the history of the bell. So I, I'd agree, I'd do that. And of course she would be interpreting what we were saying. And I would, I would pause periodically to give her time to interpret. And I thought it was always funny. I would say a few words about the history of the bell and stop. And then she would interpret what I said, but she'd go on for a pretty good <laughs> little while. <laughs> so I know she was saying things that I really didn't say, but she would have wanted me to say. <laughs> it was interpreting between the lines. <laughs> yeah. That's what she did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was just so special, though. She um, was a character, and, you know, she had so many relationships in Oak Ridge, and she loved, I think she loved every minute of her life here. I, I do, you too. Know, um, she lived um, basically her entire adult life here in Oak Ridge. She was born in Kyoto, Japan. Okay. Um, she, she was she was Japanese, and my father um, was born in India. 
he was originally from India, and they met in graduate school at Indiana University oh. <clears throat> in the mid to late 50s, somewhere in that time frame. And uh, he was pursuing his PhD in mathematical statistics there. She was um, in pursuing a graduate degree in anthropology, I think, okay. at Indiana University. And um, that's where I was born, actually, in Bloomington in 1961. Oh, okay. And then he moved down here in 1963 and took a job in the biology division. Now, you, as you know, the biology division was a really an internationally renowned. It was a it was a place where scientists from really all over the world and all over the country. And it was a very eclectic, you know, group of people. Of course, I grew up in that kind of community. And so to me, I just thought everybody, you know, grew up in a community like that, yes. you know. Oh. <laughs> and um uh, I think my parents had a really wonderful time sharing their their both of their respective cultures and you know their um, the the unique sort of nature of their relationship, their marriage, and, the, and their kind of family choices with other people who had come from faraway places and had had really ex interesting experiences and through science, which is kind of an international language, you know. Um, enjoyed living in a small town and a very tight knit community that had a very broad and international outlook. I mean, I think th that was kind of how it felt growing up here. And it was a very kind of privileged way to grow up. It was a, and especially the tight knit community part, you know, I went to Willowbrook and then Robertsville and then Oak Ridge high school. And, you know, basically grew up here in Oak Ridge in the 60s and 70s. And you use this number 34,000, but my entire life, the population was always stable. It, mm -hmm. it never seemed to change. It was always 28,000 people. Every, yeah. And I don't know how it did that, you yeah. know? Oh. <laughs> Every year, yeah, well, what's the population of Oak Ridge? And it was always 28,000. And I'm not sure how, how it did that. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Growing up, of course, I would visit um, family in India, or we would take a trip and go to Japan every few years. And right. so this kind of international travel was, and plus my father <clears throat> took many trips, you know, to collaborate with other research scientists, like many Oak Ridgers, all over the country and all over the world. And he really enjoyed travel. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he enjoyed the other scientists here in Oak Ridge who also enjoyed travel. You know, we had so many right. doing so many different things all over the world. And um, in 1979, I graduated from Oak Ridge High School and my graduation present was a trip to Japan to oh. go visit my, go stay with my mother's parents, my grandparents. Okay. They were both still alive at that time. Mm -hmm. And that was the first trip that I ever took to Japan, kind of on my own. Mm -hmm. And I made a trip to go see Hiroshima. Oh. And when I got back from Hiroshima, you know, we were kind of at the peak of Cold War tensions in America. Yes. Yeah, and I was yeah. turning about 18 years old at that time. And it was very much in the in the ether, a lot of concern about the buildup of of nuclear weapons all over the world, the, the 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 Cold War, and you know it might spin out of control on a moment's notice, and you know there would be some kind of catastrophic apocalyptic nuclear holocaust, you know, and and that was it was really front and center. I think it was it was it was. It, when if you to be a young person at the height of the cold war was to have a lot of feelings about nuclear yeah. you know weapons right. fear of nuclear weapons knowing also that here in oak ridge you know i grew up going to i remember distinctly the 25th anniversary which was in about 1967 going down to Blankenship Field and watching the production of A Thousand Sons at oh, the Playhouse. Yeah. We need to bring that back. <laughs> and, yeah, and how how much pride we took here in Oak Ridge for the 
the scientific breakthroughs and the accomplishments, you know, and, and it wasn't like what you have done, Ray, has just been so fabulous. You and Keith both telling the story of Oak Ridge to so many different audiences mm -hmm. and so many different facets and aspects of it that now it's it's a topic of open conversation. Right. Growing up in the 60s and 70s, not so much. Mm -hmm. You know, we we didn't people didn't really talk about it that much. I think that sign with the hear no evil, see no evil. Yes. Say no evil. What yeah. you see here, what you do here, what you hear here stays here. Yeah. That sign was still up on yeah. Scarborough, you know, on the road, South Illinois Avenue, leaving Oak Ridge. I remember seeing it as a kid. So the, the ethic was very different. We didn't tell our story. Right. Uh, this, that wouldn't, it wasn't part of what we did as Oak Ridgers. We, we enjoyed living here. We were proud of the role that we played in the nation's scientific enterprise. We had some sense of the historic role that we had played, but it wasn't a, a huge topic of conversation. And when I got back and told my dad about my visit to Hiroshima and how I basically, my reaction at that time was, you know, there's a whole another side of this story that we don't, we don't tell ourselves here in Oak Ridge. Right. And the Japanese people, well, they only tell themselves that side of the story. They don't know anything about our side of the story, you know, yeah, about yeah. the Manhattan Project. And I think that was in about 1979, right before I went away to college. And I think that idea was turning around in my dad's head, you know, uh -huh. and um, he enjoyed going to Japan and on one of their many visits, he sort of became fascinated with these large these large temple bells that you would see mm -hmm. in Japan. You know, they usually were kind of set aside. From, they were surrounded by woods. They were in some kind of a, you know, structure and you would ring them and they were kind of magnificent. And he just kind of came up with an idea. There was no real agenda behind it that we need to bring one of those to Oak Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an outside the box thinker yes there, he was uh, for sure <laughs> and so when the city in 1992 around that time or i think it was before then really in around not around 1990 the city of oak ridge started thinking about how we would commemorate the 50th anniversary of oak ridge in 1993 um they did a solicitation of ideas for a a monument or some kind of symbol that would represent the selected birthday theme, which was born of war, living for peace, and growing through science to celebrate Oak Ridge after 50 years. My dad and my mom and a couple of their friends who had an interest in, you know, Japanese culture and Remember, at that time, there had been several um, scientists from Oak Ridge that had spent time in Japan because th there were a lot of areas of common research. Um, fusion energy is one of those areas. So people from the fusion energy group here in Oak Ridge had gone over to Japan and spent time. There were other areas like um, any kind of health physics or you know, radiation um, impacts on human health and environment, those kind of research areas. There was a lot of exchange of information going on between Oak Ridge and Japan. And a lot of the scientists had spent time in Japan and had really enjoyed their time there. And my mother and my father always wanted to facilitate, you know, that kind of exchange. Yeah. So at the time the city was celebrating its 50th anniversary, um, my dad and a group of people put together a proposal and said, what about a friendship bell? Um, an international, we'll call it an international friendship bell to represent the international nature of it. It's not a Japanese friendship bell. It's an international friendship bell. And it will speak to the international friendships that have been developed between Oak Ridge and the rest of the world over the many years, and it will do so in a striking way. Ray, the, the, the interesting, it's funny how these things happen. Tennessee was also at a time and probably ahead of all of the other states 
in America, certainly on the East Coast, in terms of building up that relationship between uh, Tennessee and Japan. Uh, yeah. Lamar Alexander had attracted the first major automotive factory to come to Smyrna, Nissan, and had made many observations about how similar we were. This didn't, it defied common sense. It defied the common thinking, but the East Tennessee, it was very similar geographically to Japan that, that we liked the country music here and kind of, you know, the, the simple country life. And in Japan too, they kind of have built their culture on their country life and on their mountain life that we like, a certain kind of folksy music. They like that too. And so they were building all of these similarities between, and that relationship was growing. Mm -hmm. It was growing. And, and the bell kind of happened, the proposal kind of happened in that moment. Um, at, at the same time, my mother was beginning to encourage and, and work with can't remember exactly who but I think it was the schools principally mm -hmm. on the concept of setting up a exchange program a sister city exchange program the University of Tennessee had a professor of Japanese language named Eric Gangeloff and he was very tied in he ended up going to uh, he ended up work moving to Washington and worked at the U.S. Information Agency and um, there was a U.S.-Japan Friendship Association that was forming nationally, and they were helping communities like ours set up sister city exchange programs. Okay. So, you know, I, I'm, I hope I'm not confusing it too much, but a lot of this stuff was kind of happening at the same time in the early 90s. And Oak Ridge, you know, selected the Bell Project as the project to commemorate the uh, 50th anniversary of Oak Ridge, they said, okay, it does seem like a suitable project. The proposal was very well developed by the group of people working on it. The community of 50, um, which was the community organized to celebrate the, the 50th anniversary said, congratulations, you've been selected. Now go raise the money. <laughs> 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 so, that was that presented a, a whole new set of challenges. And I would had just graduated from law school at that time. And I came back here to study for the bar exam. So I had some downtime and I, I helped volunteer for that fundraising phase that we got into in about 91, 92 time frame. And that's when Dr. Weinberg got involved in the project. Right. And that's when the project to my way of thinking, I mean, it really took on a kind of a seriousness. I mean, there was a there was a there was a seriousness to the conversation about what the peace bell in Oak Ridge meant. And it was not without controversy. You know, it was it was controversial. Some people felt, you know, why are we bringing a Japanese symbol into Oak Ridge you know, to commemorate this moment in history, this critical moment in history when, you know, they started the war, you know, and we were really defending our values mm -hmm. and we have nothing to bow down about. And and that's true. I mean, it was never intended as any kind of, as any kind of, you know, remorse right. or apology or guilt trip it was more an expression about universal common humanity of people, you know, the ambition of science and the tragedy of war um, can coexist in one symbol. Yeah. But it was Dr. Weinberg who really found in it, I think, a new kind of meaning, which was to say that any technology, you know, nuclear technology can be used for good, and it can also be used for harm. And the only thing that is, the difference between the two uses is kind of what's in the human heart, you know, and that there's a kind of a humanity um, that has to go first, you know, underneath our science, as ambitious as we are with our science and our nuclear ambitions in particular. Mm -hmm. And there was no greater evangelist for 
the good that nuclear technology could do for humanity than than Alvin Weinberg. I mean, I think yeah. I looked up to him like we all looked up to him. I think we still do look up to him. I think he in in large part is is set the tone for what we are seeing today. Yeah. You know, this growth that you just described. I mean, to me, that's all part of Dr. Weinberg's legacy. And it's interesting to me that maybe a lot of the new people in town may not know that much about Dr. Weinberg. You yeah. know, thanks to you, you keep that history alive. You and Keith keep that history alive. But still, a lot of people may not realize that that the the role that, that one of the great you know fathers of nuclear technology and nuclear energy and the peaceful application of this technology um, is our own you know Alvin Weinberg here. Yeah, we, we, I, go ahead. We just thought of him as our friend. You know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> playing tennis, playing the piano. <laughs> yeah. But let me take this opportunity to to insert that, in fact, uh, one of his close friends was uh, Selma Shapiro, who started the Children's Museum of Oak Ridge. And because of that friendship, he left a lot of his personal papers and scientific papers, left copies of them to Selma uh, with the understanding that at some point they would be made public. Well, Selma's daughter, Rhonda Bogard, has taken that challenge and has actually succeeded in, uh, in scanning in all of those documents, making them available online. And on the 27th, Sunday, the 27th of October, from 1 to 4 p.m., they're going to have the uh, unveiling of a new uh, exhibit in the Children's Museum that features this uh database and tell stories about Alvin Weinberg. And, and it's, of course, set to where children can understand and appreciate it, but it also fits very nicely for those adults who don't know who this great scientist was. They can quickly learn things about him at the Children's Museum of Oak Ridge. That's and so wonderful. That's I, so I'm wonderful. Glad. Yeah, really and then they great. can go down and ring the bell, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, you know, uh, it, 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 the 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 conversation really became more what what went from, and I think when my when my parents brought this idea forward, and it was kind of tied in with the with the establishment of the the sister city exchange program. And this idea of international friendship, yes, of course, it's a it is a somber symbol. Yeah. Um, it it is a ultimately a, a very deep, I think, profound symbol of peace and the desire for peace. Yeah. Um, but in the context of great ambition and and great accomplishment, you know, great struggle, yeah. um, there there is something kind of humanistic about it but you know i think my parents meant it somebody once described it as as sort of a gift you know i think my parents meant it as um uh, an expression of their gratitude for having been able to have lives and careers right. here in oak ridge among so many international people and you know so many people that are open to the outside world in that way right. people of goodwill you know I do think that it that the bell has become a symbol for Oak Ridge. It's a gathering point for many groups that need uh, want to meet in an outside environment. And I, I do I do appreciate and understand when the when it was being first implemented that there was controversy about it. But again, I think that has uh, has settled now into a better understanding and appreciation of the idea, the concept, and uh, and I think it is a suiting symbol or an icon for Oak Ridge. It is gratifying. It's in such a beautiful park right yeah. in the middle of our city, um, the A.K. Bissell Park, named after our oh. Mayor Bissell, who was a great, you know, a great personality dur during those during those years, those older days. And it is nice, I think, to share these stories with the 
new people that are coming in with Kairos and Triso X and Orano and, you know, the massive investment that they're making at the Y12 security complex, you know, and um, knowing that the future of Oak Ridge looks very bright. Yes. Right now. And that, 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 that I know everybody's ambition is to play a role in a, an important role in, in a world that's, you know, constrained by these greenhouse gas concerns and climate change concerns and meeting the energy needs of things like AI data centers and things like that, you know, that, that Oak Ridge has a, a very important continuing role to play. And there are lots of other areas of science where Oak Ridge um, already plays, you know, a very important role in our nation's security and economic, you know, future our, in our in the future of our country. But this idea that Dr. Weinberg had that, that the technology can be used for incredibly destructive purposes you know, when 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 the conditions go wrong, the same technology that can be used to, to benefit people so greatly can also be used to do so much, you know, destruction. And um, that is something that I, I contemplate. I think that's something that he contemplates, you know, he contemplated when he put his support behind the bell sent letters to so many of his friends all over the world and asked them to support this project. You know, I think about it in the context of emerging technologies too, like AI, you know, AI is an emerging technology and we have a lot of concerns about, oh, I mean, is it going to take, is it going to take over and dehumanize us in some ways? On the other hand, AI might be able to help farmers grow their crops more sustainably, you know, traffic to move more efficiently you know uh, it, it may have tremendous benefits for for humankind and what's the difference between an ai that destroys us and an ai that makes our lives better you know that kind of question <laughs> yeah. is at the heart really uh, of the bell itself and yeah. so i'm you know to me i'm very proud of the continuing relevance you know that that project has and 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 the fact that it came out of you know the oak ridge that i grew up in is just uh, something a point of real you know personal pride for me and and i think it's the reason why i, I feel so strongly about oak ridge and, and I'm, I'm glad to be here and so you know proud of the work that you and keith do to tell all aspects of our story um, and that's kind of how all of those things happened. Let, let me insert one thought on Dr. Weinberg that I think will correlate with what you were saying. He was asked uh, before he passed away, what's the most important thing Oak Ridge has done to contribute to the world? And without any hesitation, he said nuclear medicine. It helps millions of people every year. And that had its origin here in Oak Ridge. You think about that. You talked about either good or bad. The exact same equipment, the exact same science that separated the uranium-235 for little boy, first atomic bomb ever used in warfare, also separated those stable isotopes that were sent over to the graphite reactor and made radioactive to produce nuclear medicine. So I think his insight was really good there that the thing that you want to look at in Oak Ridge is what are the good things coming out of it that uh, not just the bomb, the bomb, mm -hmm. yes, but in addition to that, the many other, the magnitude of scientific discoveries that happened and have all come from Oak Ridge. And uh, I, I can't help but say something as simple as the touch screen on your iPhone yes. was literally invented in Oak Ridge. So yes. many things that we take for granted that we don't even uh, just don't take a second thought about had yeah. its origin in Oak Ridge. The nuclear yeah. Navy had its origin here. I mean, so fantastic. And Weinberg was involved in that with uh then Captain Rickover, Admiral Rickover, who realized that if you make a reactor out of highly enriched uranium, 
you can make it small enough to go in a submarine. And again, he learned that here in Oak Ridge. Yeah. So you, you just look at almost any aspect of our technology today, the things that we just take for granted. And if you dig deep enough, you may find that it had its origin in the Manhattan Project. And interesting, you know, so interesting. Born of war and that sense of urgency to to beat the enemy to the, you know, to the technology, to, to make those breakthroughs uh, before the enemy could, you know, and that that is that that mission driven getting it done, you know. Um <laughs> but you don't know where it's going to lead, you know, you don't no. know where it's going to lead. So, you know, here are my parents arrived from Japan and India in 1963 and basically lived their lives here. And, and, um, you know, after that kind of the cauldron really of the early nineties, when we were doing all that, the, 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 um, sister city exchange program started in, uh, I, I believe it was 19, they started talking about it in 90 and I believe it launched in 1991, Ray. Okay. I think that was the first exchange so that uh, we are next year technically going to meet the 35th anniversary of it. Wow, so, I did not realize it had been going on that long. Yeah, wow. because in 90, I think, is when the uh, agreement was signed. Uh, okay. And we selected a town called Nakamachi at that time. Now it's it's called Nakashi um, because it is adjacent to Tokaimura. Tokaimura is the headquarters of the Japan Atomic Energy Research Institute. Oh, I Jerry. Mm -hmm. So there had been uh, scientific exchanges between Oak Ridge and Jerry. And um, when we broached the topic of establishing a formal sister city exchange program, they recommended the neighboring city, Naka, Nakamachi. And so for 35 years now, um, a group of junior high school students is selected every year. Um, they receive training, some Japanese language. Usually my mother provided all of the training, <laughs> how to, what to expect when you go to Japan, you know, when you stay with a host family. And then the host family, their side would, would help arrange a host family for each of our kids. Yeah. These are usually rising seventh or eighth graders at five typically five from robertsville and five from jefferson junior high school okay. um, were selected every year and they would go to japan for about 10 days and stay with host families that also had a child in that family around the same age All right and then later in the summer uh when they were on vacation but we were in school their kids would come over and stay with the host families here in oak ridge that pro that project now has been going on since 1991. Mm -hmm. So there are now um, people, young, they're no longer kids who did that program 30 years ago. They're now grown adults. Yeah. And they work for the city of Naka. <laughs> and they run the program. I mean, we even now have examples of kids in the program whose parents went on the exchange uh, okay and they were the, in the next generation, generation now the so. next generation it's happening um it has happened every year except for the year that fukushima happened the japanese didn't feel like they could take our the, the program that year and then the covid um in 2020 it got called off at the last minute mm -hmm. it they we did not do the exchange in 2021 the japanese uh, side they were still hesitant to do it in 2022 they didn't they didn't feel ready to reopen and they didn't feel ready to reopen in 2023 either hmm. so this year 2024 was the first year that we did do the exchange this summer in five years oh my and unfortunately my mother passed away last year yeah. so yeah. we're a little bit one hand behind our back you know who's gonna <laughs> teach japanese how to use chopsticks all of the basics um, so anyway, I filled her seat a little bit to try and just reassure the organizers, you know, Jerry Luckman and Ken Luckman are yeah. the head of the Sister City program. And and then, you know, we have um, 
John Smith, a teacher and uh, at Jefferson Middle School, is the chairman of the program now, and another teacher at Robertsville, Sean Seifert. They are the two kind of lead organizers. And then there's a committee made up of usually alumni or families that participated in the past who keep the program alive. Okay. Um, and this year I sat in just to kind of reassure people that, you know, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> My mom would you have wanted this to go forward. And even though we're we're without her, it'll be fine. Everything yeah. will be fine. Yeah. We we got some help from Knoxville this year, the Knox Asia Festival, the organizers of the Knoxville Asia Festival, huh. one of the largest festivals in the Southeast. They have like 60,000 people that go to this festival wow. at World's Fair Park. Yeah. Anyway, the organizer of it is a woman, a very energetic woman named Kumi Alderman. She helped us to prepare the kids this year. Good. So we we read, we restarted the program this year. It was very successful. Our kids were wonderful, as they always are. And then their kids came over and our host families, you know, we they do lots of fun things. They the schools help organize activities for the kids when they're here. And, you know, the mayor um, and the, 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 the council received the kids when they came here, just like their mayor had received us when we went, I went, I accompanied our kids this year just to kind of round out the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then um, their mayor actually came over. So the good news to report is that our sister city exchange program is alive and well. Yes. You know, and it will it it looks like it's going to continue uh going forward and we may even try and find ways to build on it. You know, there is so much exciting new stuff happening at our high school for example okay. that we've talked about and it's in the still in the talking phase but could we do a robotics competition between uh -huh our high school kids and, you know, some of their high school kids, or, you know, could we expand the, the, the sister city exchange to involve some adult exchanges in the future, you know, um, among artists and, yeah. and other crafts people uh, to share on an adult level in, in addition to the uh, student exchange, but the heart and soul of the, of the exchange program is is the student exchange and uh it's just amazing to watch you know uh thir 13 year old kids who you know have never been in japan before get ready and get over there and you know they go with such open hearts and such open minds it's just it's, it's just amazing to see and um I think that it's definitely one thing that I, I would uh, call a legacy of my mom. You know, her spirit is very much alive and well yeah. uh, in the Sister City Exchange program. Yeah. And, and I think that's appropriate and uh, because she put her heart and soul into it. And I think uh, the fact that it's it's doing so well yeah. and even thinking about broadening the horizons of the program to include adults and older kids. I think that she would be excited for that. Yeah, well, yeah. And, so. and it's and it's it's hard to know what you know what what Oak Ridge is going to look like in five years. We do seem to be growing. The thirty four thousand number is astonishing to me because <laughs> as long as I've lived here, it's always been twenty eight thousand, twenty eight thousand, <laughs> twenty eight thousand, and now it seems to be growing it and does. changing. And you read about. Oak Ridge in these national news stories about, you know, um, about the nuclear future right. of, of America. And we are undoubtedly right smack dab in the middle of it here. Our relationship with the University of Tennessee is, is, is stronger and it seems to me closer than ever. You know, I've been following with great interest you and Dr. Lee Readinger and, you know, you're chronicling that history yes. and UT is doing great. And, you know, we're all incredible Tennessee Vols fans here in Oak Ridge. And today is the UT Alabama game. Uh -oh. so, you know, 
<laughs> and we're excited about that. So it just seems to me that there's something happening here that we're on the cusp of something, something new, um, some change. And I really appreciate this opportunity to come and talk about, you know, kind of these legacy, um, these legacy topics that are still so relevant today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Exactly right. Another example from Alvin Weinberg is <laughs> when he was, uh, you know, they built 13 different nuclear reactors out at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory over the period of a number of years. And his favorite technology was always the molten salt reactor. Uh, it did not gain favor in the political arena during his lifetime, but he continued to promote the idea. Well, do you know, as you look at what's being built now, the Kairos uh, small modular reactor and others around the world, they're using molten salt technology. So uh, Weinberg was so far ahead of his time, he understood, maybe like few others did, the uh, potential for nuclear energy and for things associated with nuclear uh, I think he thought very deep about that. And uh, and in in his books that he wrote and in papers that he left, you can see evidence of his uh, his great understanding of what the potential for the future might be. You and, know, we're, and we're, you know, we're living in it. We're seeing it. Uh, uh, you know, we not only have the small modular reactors that are going out at the previous K-25 site, the East Tennessee Technology Parks Heritage Center. And then TVA is uh, building small modular reactors on the uh, Clinch River Breeder Reactor site. And then we've got the, uh, we just talked about Triso X. Uh, they're going to be producing the fuel for the uh, nuclear reactors. And and the other one, Arano, a multi-billion dollar investment in a centrifuge factory going just on the uh, south side at the, at the intersection of Highway 95 and 58. So all of that west end of Oak Ridge is, is going to be growing industrially uh, in the next few years in, in a significant fashion. And then even to think about this, Rom, at the uh, Bull Run steam plant for TVA, which is, you know, shut down and it was a, a coal fired steam plant. We've got this company in that's going to be building a stellarator for fusion energy. And, and isn't that amazing? You know, Rob, fusion energy has been 30 years away for my entire career. Yeah. <laughs> and and if, yeah, if, you, if you talk about it now and ask them, they'll tell you it's 30 years away still. So yeah. we may not see it, but eventually that's where I think our energy source is going to be. It, it may not be in the next 30 years, but ultimately and eventually it'll be there. And Oak Ridge is right in the middle of it. Not only uh, do we have the energy company coming in, type one energy coming in for that fusion research, the Oak Ridge National Laboratory manages the ITER in France. That yeah. is a huge uh, demonstration of uh, of fusion energy. So well, one of the partners in the ITER project is Japan. Yeah. Japan oh, yeah. is is a partner and the Japanese component of the uh, ITER project is managed out of Naka. Oh our, my goodness. Ah. Our sister city. Yeah. So when we were over there this summer mm -hmm. uh, on the second day that we go to the on the first day we arrived we 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 just go to a hotel in Tokyo and go out to dinner. And I was exhausted. Our <laughs> kids were like ready to go. <laughs> yeah. The next day we do a tour around Tokyo. And then in the afternoon, the sister city sends a bus to pick us up and take us to the sister city, which is about two hours away mm -hmm. there. You know, the host families come and pick up the kids and take them back to their homes. Right. The next day we get together and we go for a tour and one of, of as a delegation, and one of the places they take us is to the ITER, the um, Japanese Research Institute that supports the ITER for Japan. Uh. And we say, oh, we're from Oak Ridge. And they say, oh, yeah, we know everybody in Oak Ridge. And, you know, um, it's, it, it's a 
it kind of makes everybody feel like we have something in common. Oh, that, yeah, closer yeah, together. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Feel connected. You know, maybe on the on the last point, Ray. I don't know if it's the last point or not, but uh, you know, I did note that this year's Nobel Peace Prize hmm. went to the group of Japanese survivors of the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which that group has over the many years, it's it has developed a very strong voice against the use of nuclear weapons and, you know, in support of non-proliferation and that whole question about what do we do now? How do we how do we live with this knowledge of how to make nuclear weapons? That's the the question that Dr. Weinberg also asked. Yes. You know, yes. how do we handle that? How do you handle the the knowledge? You know, it, it's like you can't unlearn it. Yeah. Um, so you have to kind of learn how to live with it. And that's that's very much what the what the bell symbolized to him. But to me, it's interesting that at this moment of great promise, you know, of this technology, and it certainly seems to be breathing kind of a new life into Oak Ridge, yeah. that there's still a global conversation going on about 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 nuclear weapons and and the 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 need also to be vigilant you know in how we manage uh uh our our relationship with this technology and i also feel there also you know oak ridge is kind of at the heart of the matter you know that that we that we have done a, a good job and i think that the the one side informs the other you know, the, the positive side helps us to keep in perspective the negative side and the negative side helps us to keep in perspective the positive side. And that we've done a good job of that here in Oak Ridge. And really, really, again, once again, you know, I don't mean to be so prideful and boastful, but I'm really, really pr proud to be from, from, Oak from Oak Ridge, you know, that, that my parents, like so many people who came here, came from far away to this place. Um, and then that so many special relationships and so many were formed and so many special things have happened here and that we are at the center, you know, of what seems to be uh, an important conversation about where this technology is going and also an important conversation about the ethics of it all. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, you know, that's very much alive and well here in Oak Ridge. And um, it's just to me... Uh, I think it'll always be a part of my life. You know, it's just always, yeah. it'll, it'll never be anything that I won't feel extremely proud of and excited about, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think these questions will ever be extinguished. I, I mean, I think, I, I think we'll, we'll continue to have these conversations. And as long as we do, um, we'll be good. You know, that's kind of how I feel about it. And, and, you know, I do lots of tours for people coming to Oak Ridge, and, and they always include the Oak Ridge International Friendship Bell. Yes. And it's always good to see the impact that visiting that bell and getting to ring the bell and read the information on the bell, it has a significant impact on visitors to Oak Ridge. Yes. I, I do think it's appropriate that it's the icon of Oak Ridge. Yes. And yeah. I, I really thank you for bringing us the uh, particularly personal insight that you have into how we came to be where we are today and how much the bell is actually a part of that. So well, thank you for everything that you uh, the, that you and Keith do, Ray. You are real heroes for, well, thank our, you. for our city and you're you're real. You are real authentic heroes. I really am honored to be your friend. All right, good. And I same to you. I appreciate what you're doing. And although we didn't talk about it, you're involved in a lot of other things in Oak Ridge too. And I want to commend you for that because there are things happening with the Scarborough 85 monument, the lunch for literacy programs, other things that you're involved in too. And, and they're all good things, but yeah. I really do appreciate you uh, bringing us up to date on the sister city and the, uh, giving us a unique look at the history of the Oak Ridge International Friendship Bell.
Yeah. Folks, next week or next time we have an event, I'll have uh, Dr. Warren Doctor, who is the executive director of the East Tennessee History Center, as our guest, and we will talk about what's going on in the in the Knoxville area regarding history and specifically about the museum there, in the East Tennessee History Center. So, thanks for being with us, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next time.